bolt to go in. That is the... That's what in the world puts the pad and it should be used. The, um, let's take a little now then crew welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and Sam is back to help us again she just can't keep away how are you Sam okay. I've got a, a lot of fun <laughs> yeah it is actually pretty cool I enjoy this and I really enjoy the company thank you for coming down um, I have a gift for you yeah I know pretty cool <laughs> Hallelujah! Well, you got a rattle gun last time, and now, now friends of mine down at um, Shepster's Garage sent me this really cool cap, and they actually sent me it about a year ago, and I have worn it in a couple of videos, but I really didn't want to get it dirty because it's like it's the wrong colour for a workshop. You know, you're going to get oil on there really quick. But I thought, well, I reckon Sam could keep it clean. So here you go. You can wear the Shepster's, Shepster's Garage cap for this video. And you're wondering, what on earth are we going to do in this video? Well, we've done very little. Perfect, look at like that. One of those was that wigger, a wannabe. Yeah, we've both got caps, Stella. Tank tools and ships to garage. Very cool. Steering. Now, we've done, what have we done? We've done like, uh, on steering. We've done not a lot of stuff on steering, to be honest. And uh, steering racks. A pretty important part of the steering system in fact the main component really and lots of cars suffer from problems with the steering racks and garages just swap them out very very rarely these days do garages actually take steering racks apart and try and fix them it's only when they're a rare unit that they have to get sent away for reconditioning but again most garages wouldn't take a steering rack apart it's changed as a unit like an alternator or a starter motor these days so the knowledge of inspection on steering racks is getting pretty specialist and there's not that many people, there's not general knowledge for a mechanic to know how a steering rack works and what kind of things can go wrong. Now obviously on older cars you can get non-power steering uh, and when power steering came along it was more of a hydraulic type power steering. I've, um, when we blew that engine up in the old Nissan, what was it, Nissan Sentra 1.3 uh, that had, as I was taking the engine out, I noticed it had a non-power steering steering rack. And I thought, hey, I'll steal that. We'll put it to one side and we'll do a video on it because it's a really easy one to pull apart, very easy, simple to understand. I do also have a power, a hydraulic power steering rack out of the RAV4 that I've kept from years ago. And I'll do a second video on the power steering rack because that's, that's a lot more common these days. Uh, obviously, we've got onto electric power steering as well on the modern vehicles, but there's still a lot of cars out there with hydraulic power steering, so I'll do a video on how that one works. A bit more technical. But the non-power steering rack, I thought, hey, let's pull it apart before I scrap it and, uh, and take some measurements and do an inspection and just to run through the various things that you need to look for if you have a problem with your steering, because it could well be the steering rack. Okay, well, here it is. It's quite long because it's about the same width as a car almost. So starting at one end, we've got the, uh, the track rod end with the ball joint. We've got what we call the rack end, and there's another joint inside there, which we're going to test. We've got the boot, and they often fail, and that's a warrant fail here in New Zealand if they get a hole in them. Uh, we've got the adjustment here for the yoke. That basically ensures that the pinion and the, um, the linear gear teeth are correctly positioned. We've got some mounts, and of course we've got all the same sort of stuff at the far end there, look. So, there should be, you know, from an engineering perspective, there should be some bushes in here, one at each end. There's going to be some gears. There's going to be some adjustment. And uh, Sam's going to be, give me a hand pulling this apart. And uh, basically, we're going to go through component ID and do an inspection. And, um, well, yeah, it should be quite pretty interesting for all of us. I actually haven't pulled apart a Nissan Sentra steering rack before, so it's the first for me to. Okay, are you ready, Sam? Yeah. You <laughs> Cap's looking good. I really like it. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Can't stop looking at myself. <laughs> Damn. So vain. <laughs> Ooh, shady. Right, what we're going to need first? We're going to need the vice. Let's get it set up and we'll get it in the vice and we'll take off those um, ball joints at the end, the uh, 
track rod ends. They're called different things in different parts of the world, but in English I call them a track rod end. Here we go. Okay, Sam, first job is we're going to see how rusty it is, because yeah. this was part of the paddock for ages. Looks like it's going to snap. I hope not. <laughs> we need to undo that lock nut, and then once that lock nut's undone, we can then twiddle this off. Now, on the car, did you see those little flats there Look for a spanner? It's all hidden under the rust, but there is some yeah. flats moulded into it. Fortunately, we've got the use of the vice, so we're just going to trap that whole rod in the vice. Get a spanner that fits on there and hopefully we can crack it off. We'll spray a bit of um, WD-40 on there as well, that might help. So we'll give it a go. Um, I think it's going to be a 17 spanner, so if you want to have a little hunt around for a 17 spanner. Right. Oh, yeah, we're not going to get the socket on that one. 14, 17? 17 I think, it could be bigger, but let's have a look. Give it a try. So you have to use the open ended this time. That's going to fit on. Can you get on from the top? Oh, look. Oh. Bigger. <laughs> to uh, try a 19. Is there a 19 in that set? I think there is. Cool. Okay. So is it going to fit on? It is. Yep. Right. Now it's going to be pretty tight. So rather than bash it with the palm of your hand, we can do something else and we can use our, our magic hammer. It's a very useful <laughs> hammer this. So if I hold the spanner, because I'm the one that takes all the risks, and if you want to grab your magic hammer and hit the hammer, sorry, against the spanner in that direction. But before you do that, let's just put a bit of spray on there. Because it might help. Okay. Hopefully. Right. Go on then. Go on. Yeah, go on. Hang on, hang on. I wonder if it doesn't look left hand thread. These can be really tight, by the way. That's sort of don't know how they are. Um, I think it's left hand thread. They're not normally left hand thread. It's just, just grab the, is there an 18 spanner? It just feels a little bit loose to that. It might be an 18. Well, I've done something really stupid and used an 18. Nope, it is a 19. Here we go. Let's have another go. Right. Nice and hard. Go on. Ah. I can see what's happening. Okay. The whole unit's turning together, so what we'll do is we'll uh, move that in the vise and we're going to trap, yeah, we'll do it like that, we'll trap that bit in the vise. That'll stop that from turning. Okay, and again, resume position, and again, have a good go. Bloody good, look at that. <coughs> you are a genius. You're a lot stronger now, aren't you? You've been working out. Okay. Just lifting tools. Yeah, that's whenever you come here, isn't it? That big rattle gun is the heaviest thing we have, I think. Right, so now... Jeez. And the, the, the threads are so long, so you can make adjustment to the steering on when it's... You know, you, get your car, you get your steering, the tracking done, you can. This is basically the, the things that they adjust. One of the things that they adjust. Okay. That down there. I mean, one of the things that these things can fail on when you go for a warrant is there can be too much play in that ball joint. And I, I did a video on a um, Yamaha Viking that had been in an accident, and one of these had got really badly damaged, so that's already on a video. Okay, now, other side, let's just spin it around without smacking around the head with it. So it doesn't go down too well. Spray. Okay, 19 again. Right, here you go. Give it a whack. Hang on. We're moving in the box. How's your hand? Alright. Is it, is it like shocks down. It's resonating, isn't it, down your arm? 
Jeez. Welcome to my world. Right, one more. Give it another go. Uh, one more. Bloody good. See, yeah, I was ready for it. Very careful, Yuri. Right. Okay, so you can spin that one off if you like. So you can lose the hammer. Oh, not that bit. That's the castle nut. That's for the that bit there. Look. So you can spin that off. And I'll get some stuff for the next bit. Loads of threads. Probably been there for a long time. This this car was parked in the guy's driveway for a few years before he, before he gave me it. He said, "Hey, why do you have this car? And you can let your students take it apart." And we never got around to taking it apart. He was heck, so it ended up being a paddock basher for Ben. Ben was oh, my wow. oldest son, and he just used to drive around the paddock and drive into things and get it stuck. And <laughs> so it's full of dents. You've probably seen it on the trailer, and it's uh, it's not not very happy. Now. We shouldn't really mount it in the vise on here because if we squash that tube, it could damage the actual unit. So, actually quite difficult to mount in the vise. How are we going to do this? Okay, we can do it on that bit there, look. Okay, in fact, we could even take these, these mounts off. Let's, let's get rid of those. Don't need those anymore. And again, if these, these are bushes, these two, if these wear badly, then the rack will start to move around on the car, and that can cause the steering to be quite loose. It's one of the reasons why they're loose. Hiluxes, total Hiluxes are pretty bad for that, to replace those bushes quite regularly. Okay, so we're not going to harm the rack in any way, mounting in the vice like that, and just check it works. Ooh, look at that, pretty cool. So basically, from your, if I was turn it so, uh, so the viewers can see, basically, when it's in the car. So I, I do take a lot of things for granted, unfortunately. There we go. Okay, so you've got your steering wheel. There's a steering rod that goes onto there. And there's something a bit like, a bit like that. It's got another joint on it. It's not something else, but that would basically be your steering. Your steering wheel will be up there like that. Okay. So you turn the steering wheel and it does that to the, the rack basically. Oh. And these bits. It's like an accordion. It's the first time I've ever been, been described. Like, it is a bit like it's like a it's a, like a gator, isn't it? You're like a, yeah, you're right. Interesting. Okay, so we need to remove these boots. And again, it's a warrant fail if any of these boots have got a rip in them. They have to be fully sealed. These look pretty old. Now, at some point, this one's been replaced. Because see, it's got a it's got a cable tie on there. It shouldn't have a cable tie. That's bad. Bad mechanic. It should have these wiry clips like this. Or similar. It should be a metal kind of fastener that holds it in place. Certainly not a cable tie. And I've seen cable ties used on um, CV joints as well. On boots. Which is really bad. But you see that, that one moves around. It's quite loose and water can get in and stuff. That one's nice and tight because I've used a proper clip. And sometimes there's a clip at this end as well, but that one doesn't seem to have that. Okay, so we need to basically, easiest way with these metal clips is you can just give them a wiggle. So if you continue to wiggle that, it should snap. Look at that, you see? So easy. Brilliant. That's rubbish. I don't need that anymore. Okay, so that's that off there, and we should be able to. Pull that now, that boot off. So you give it a will it turn? Yeah, there you are. Is a bit of dust going with it? A bit of crap. Put a bit of spray on it, might be easier. Oh, you got it. Cool. <laughs> got there before I did. Right. And then we should be able to yeah, pull that off there like that. There you go. So you can pull the whole boot off now. Wicked. Okay. Good job. Right, now on this one, you're going to need the snippers and you get the side cutters put wood and uh, you're going to cut through that 
that zip tie there. Look. Can you get in there and snip that? Professional. It's got to be easier than doing those bar grips. Yeah. You did a good job with that, you know, doing those bar grips. They're still on. Customer didn't die. Oh. <laughs> Just scraping off the top of it. All right, hang on. Let me give you. How about if I turn it around like that and you have yeah. a go at snipping out there? Give it another go. And you've already got it. Do a bit of a hulk on it. Are oh, you going to go over the underneath technique? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's Almost. Good. Go on a bit more. You're nearly there. Yeah. I think we're there. Perfect. Okay, so that one should pull off the same way, hopefully. Well, we can see interesting <laughs> stuff now. There we go. Right. So the two boots were actually. That's the new one, that was the one that re was replaced, and this is the original one. I think I saw a rip on that. Looks pretty good. It could be reused, but hey, you'd always put new ones on, wouldn't you, if you're going to recondition it? Right. So we can see. I tool it around the device. There we go. So you can see now we've got what we call those. It's a, bit like, it's a bit like a gear, isn't it? But it's, it's a flat gear. Mm. So we call that a linear gear. Alright. And uh, where else would you find a linear gear? Not so much on a car, but sometimes, you know. Um, a bike. A bike I drive on. No. Sometimes <laughs> gates. You know those electric gates that you get yeah. for houses? Sometimes they have like an air ram, and other times they have like an electric motor with a little gear. And they have a, they have a linear gear yeah, along the front of the gate. And it, Pull the gate across. So that one. Something else we can look at now, while well, before we pull it apart, is the angle of all those teeth. They're all the same from end to end. They're all set at the same angle, uh, which means it's it's a non-progressive steering rack. Back in the 80s, and probably other times, people will correct me, no doubt. Um, they made started making steering racks with um, with these linear teeth and they were set at a different angle on either end so that what you were doing when you were parking the car you didn't have to turn the steering wheel as far for the wheels to suddenly come in tight and it made parking the car easy it sort of reduced the number of times you had to turn the steering wheel people should just be better drivers <laughs> yes well they, i think actually they thought it was a bad idea after a while because they don't do it anymore yeah they're all just standard ones um yeah it's pretty easy <laughs> Right, so what we've got here now is we've got this inner ball joint. We call this the rack end, okay? And to test a rack end, the ball should be tight enough to hold the weight of that rod. So if that was to just drop down on its mm -hmm. own, this would be too loose yeah. and it would need to be changed. That's sort of the ballpark way of testing them. And you can see that one no, there. Down a bit. Yeah, it's sort of, it droops. it's just not quite tight enough. So that, that one really sort of borderline. We should really, you know, that's probably going to be a fail at some point in the future, early on. But that one's still, if you feel that, feel the difference, that one's pretty tight. Mm. Feel that one. No, it's quite that thick, isn't it? <laughs> right. Now, this unit here, this part, can be purchased just like these. You can use it from an aftermarket um, spares place. You don't have to buy a genuine Nissan. And that is held onto the rack. This is the actual rack, this bit. Um, it's threaded in there and obviously being part of the steering system it's really important that that never ever comes loose under normal use otherwise one of your wheels won't steer anymore. You probably end up in a ditch okay. probably I would say. So there's two things they do there should be thread lock on the threads inside there and can you see there's like a washer here yeah. and it's been bent over it's got a tab that's bent okay. over there so the first thing we have to do is get rid of that washer we've got to bend it back find a spanner that's going to fit onto these flats and hopefully be able to un undo that and it should just be a normal thread hopefully and we can do the same on that end once they're off then we will remove the remove the yoke and then we're going to pull out the pinion gear remember the pinion gear yep. from the diff? <laughs> it looks a bit different but it's still called a pinion 
Okay, so we're going to need... Jesus, we're going to need a hammer. You're going to be armed with a hammer again. And basically a punch. And you're going to need to wear some eye protection on this. Right. They're posh. Matches your shirt, girl. <laughs> Look at that. Very smart. Okay. Right, so what we'll do is we'll pull the rack this way. Just so we don't have too much movement. And then we'll get a little chisel on there. I look terrible. Yeah, you look almost terrible. Right. Okay, so what we need to do is. Is it better on both sides? It is. Okay, so we're just going to give that a whack. Right, one more. That's it. Okay, and now this side. Sorry. Come on, keep going. You're doing all right. Brilliant. Now that wash is a use once item, so you'd always put a new one in. Okay, we've got to try and find a spanner now that's going to fit onto there, which is pretty, it's a pretty large size spanner, isn't it? Might have one. Yeah, reserve spanner drawer. Try that one, Sam. No. Bigger. Yeah, bigger. Okay. Well, that's a twenty. That's a 26. I know it's an old size, but it might fit. No. Still bigger? Yeah. 28? Good enough. Almost. Almost. Oh, damn, it's probably a 30. <laughs> okay, we might have to use. Might have to use the adjustables. a little bit so let's do that do that that should give us enough room to go in hopefully okay that should be a normal you know what this is called a monkey spanner oh, or a monkey yeah. wrench monkey. yeah just a wrench this is a good one this is a backhoe or back up, made in Sweden. Very posh. Bloody expensive, actually. I have two of these somewhere. He has a brother. <laughs> right. So, what I need you to do is give that a give that a good Yorkshire yuck upwards. Oh, no. Come on, you're right. I almost did. You did it almost. Hey, look at that. Professional. Right. So you pull that off, and that should I'll you should be able that. to. Yeah, you should be able to. You can use a spanner again if you want. Yeah, you go. We can get that. Okay, it's going to be stiff all the way off because it's got that thread lock on it as well. <laughs> yes. I yeah, put that. Brilliant. Okay, so that is the one off that end. We'll flick it round. And this one's going to be a bit harder because we're going to be so far away. We'll just push it in there. Look. A bit more remotely now. I just, I just don't, I just don't want to clamp around here because yeah. it looks like we're going to crush it. Okay. Right. So we need to just ping those back again, don't we? And again. Cool. So that one, flick it over now. It's right underneath it. Greasy now. <laughs> okay. All right, you ready? Good, good, swift. Yuck. One. 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 Right, I'm gonna have to bend those ones back as well, aren't we? <laughs> I don't know. Right, can we do that one a bit as well? Can you get in there? Excellent. Okay, we can get on there. Right, so there's your big spanner again. 
Same again. I'll support the rack. Is it, you put it on down and pull it up. Yeah, on that one. Hmm? Is it going to fit? Or is it too tight? Is it tightened up slightly? Hang on, pull it up. Try that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Heave! Okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> try, it, try it like that. We're pulling it. Be good and tight so you're not going to slip off. Alright, try that. Come on, do it again. Look at that. Professional. You can take it off if you want to move it around. Oh, there you go, you've done it. Perfect. Yep, yeah, that'll do. Right. Can you get that one off? Just. We've been on since the day it was born. <laughs> and you can see why these washers are used once because they get really yeah. chewed up and they have little lugs that stick in the end of the rack and all sorts. Cool. Perfect. Right, so. It's now suddenly become a manageable size. We can cope with that, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next is going to be this. And this is what we call, inside there is the yoke. And, uh, it's not an egg yolk. Yeah. All right. And what it's all it's doing is it's pushing against this shaft. And it's pushing it towards the teeth on the pinion to make sure that there's no backlash. Now remember on that. Um, I'll get rid of that again. Um, remember on that diff video that we did last time round. Remember I said at the start we had to have a bit of a gap between the teeth on the pinion and the crown wheel to allow for expansion because it warms up and for lubrication and stuff. Well, a steering rack doesn't get hot. It hardly moves at all. Plus, can you imagine if we had a gap between the teeth, what that would do to the steering wheel? If you're going down the road, it'd be like clink, 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 like an old Land Rover, wouldn't it? You'd be constantly <laughs> trying to keep it in a straight line. So on a steering rack, it's one of the very few components that has zero backlash. See, you learn something every day here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll mount that device and we're gonna crack. We've got a great big nut to undo now, this one here. So we can probably use the same adjustable spanner for that. Okay. Ah, there you go. Now, I'll show you how to adjust this. You've got a little wheel. So you can just turn it on. So you want to make that the right size for that big nut on the outside for us. Let's have a look. Yeah, now obviously you've got, you've got issues with the casting and stuff in the way. You might do better, hang on, just to go in one, just go on that side there, look. Then you, you, when it turns, you've got yeah. nothing to hit for a while. There you go. That's good and tight. The important thing is we've got to keep it on there now. Which way is it going to go? Righty, tighty, lefty. So it's going to come towards me. All right? Okay. There you go. So stand this side of it. And I will try and keep that on the nut. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. It might be too tight. We might have to use a punch on it. Hang on, we're dropping off. Let's have another go. Let's have another go. This is great fun. Enjoy this, guys. Okay, and again. Yes, you got it. Look at that. Pretty good. So it's now loose. That, that's enough. That's fine. And then we should. We can actually leave it on. We don't have to take that off anymore. All it is is a lock nut. So you can find me a socket out of the drawer. It's going to fit on that sort of bolt head there. Look. <laughs> it's not a double ended woman. <laughs> right, that's too big. What size is that? That's a 14. Try a 12. Try a 12. 12 might fit. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right, where did you put your ratchet? You put it away. Oh, right, so grab your ratchet. I'm going to be behind you. Maybe I have time. Yeah. Don't think it's me. <laughs> cool. Okay, so again, it's going to be lefty loosey. Yeah, Is yeah. it meant to be swinging? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Now inside there is a spring. Is it going to spring out? Probably. So you might want to just hold the end of your ratchet as you're doing it. It's, it's not a massive spring. It's like a jack in the box. You just going to yeah, pop out. No, I love taking something apart. It's the putting it back together again that I don't really like too much. OK, 
Okay, so you can take that off. There we go. <laughs> okay, so that was a bit of an anti-climax, yeah. wasn't it? Right, look at that original, original Nissan Grease from the battery. That's never been changed by the looks of it. Right, so we've got, start putting some bits together. So we've got the pinion bits, the, uh, the yoke. Now, in there, we've got, geez, fat screwdriver, I think. In there, we have. A ring? Yeah, like a shim, isn't it? That, so a bit of a shim thing. And then, oh, we've got another shim. And then we've got. Oh, ouch. Okay. Uh, we're going to need. Oh, there we are. Look, we've got it. There we go. That's the yoke. Oh, wow. <coughs> Doink. And it's made of nylon. Because again, these nothing's spinning in there. It's just that mm -hmm. shaft moving from side to side. And it's covered in grease and everything. So the reason why. There's a spring inside there is obviously over the years and those millions of corners that you go around that nylon is going to wear down isn't it mm -hmm. so that if you compare that to a brand new one there'd be a difference in height so what it does by having a spring as that wears down it keeps a constant pressure constant force pushing it otherwise as soon as that if there was no spring as soon as that wore a little bit it'd lose all its tension and then you get movement, <coughs> you get this knock knock between the teeth, and then you get you get a gap, you know? And you're driving down the road. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, we're getting there. So all we've got left to do now is oh look at that, there's movement now. It's not very good. Um, we've got another big lock nut. Now, I don't think I can reposition the device any better than I have really. So we're gonna have to just go with that. Uh, if I push that all that way. Out of the way for you. Yep, so if you get your. Oh, hang on, let's see if we can get this, this universal joint out of the way first. So the bolt's already out, so I must have taken that off before. <coughs> Correct hammer. <coughs> there we go. Right. This is quite critical, we need to talk about this. You can take those glasses off now if you want I to. I feel like I look like I go to the library. <laughs> yeah, if you read books and stuff. It's very cool. Okay, so I got, all, I got really excited all of a sudden then. Universal joint on the steering column. Uh, a friend of mine who's been working on a really old American car, um, the customer complaint was that the steering was tight and then when they turned the steering wheel, it then suddenly went a bit slack, and then it got tight again, then it went slack, and then it got tight, and then slack. Old cars. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and the garage that they took it to, to fix it, um, replaced the steering box. Now, it's old school. It didn't have a steering rack, it had a steering box. And it was still the same. And it had nothing to do with the steering box. It had nothing to do with any ball joints or steering linkage after the steering box down to the wheels. It was actually a fault on the steering column. And all steering columns pretty much have these universal joints. And just like any universal joint, it, it moves in two planes. It moves that way and it moves that way. Now imagine that one of these or two opposing cups have got dry inside that UJ then it's going to be really, really hard to turn that way, but maybe working just fine going that way. And as this joint rotates, it's going to basically be relying on two of those cups are going to move lots, or have to move lots to go around that angle, and two are going to do very little within that angular range. And that was causing the steering to be really stiff and then really slack. And it was, uh, it was a bit of an oversight by the mechanic. It was only when they pulled the steering column out and they couldn't physically actually move the joint in one of the directions. It was C solid. They realised what the problem was. So it's always good to check your UJs. <laughs> right. OK, back to the rack. Perfect, Sam. OK, so you're going to need a big adjustable wrench again, which I think is just over there. Now, I'm not sure. Will it go big enough to go over that? large, enormous lock nut. We might have to twizzle the wheel a bit and see if it's going to go. Let's put it out to full size first. Let's see if it's going to be big enough for it. Is it going to go on? Oh, just. Okay. All right. Yeah, so tw twizzle it up so it's nice and tight. I don't know which way. <laughs> I always get it wrong. I 
I always get it wrong. It's something that I can never remember. You've got to wiggle it a little bit to get it nice and tight. Snug, we call that. Okay. Right, I think. There you go. Right, so you want to go down. God, cut off my fingers. Oh, nearly. Damn. Okay. Let's have another go. Let's just try that. Yes. Bloody good. Okay, right, you can whizzle that, whizz that off all the way if you want. If it gets tight again, just use your spanner. <laughs> yeah, it's got tight. It's just all the crap on the threads, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Come back to me. Yeah. Try that. All right, we'll take it off. Oh, there we are. Done it. Go on. Didn't, didn't need a lot. Just a bit. Okay, now. You can see this bit here has got these little lugs. So there's going to be a Nissan special tool that's going to fit into there, maybe a socket or something that's going to have these little keys to turn it. We don't have one of those. And um, fortunately, this rack probably isn't going to go back together again either. But hmm. maybe there's a few ways we can do this. One is a pair of long nose pliers. We can put those in there and then we can turn the pliers. And if it's not too tight, it might come undone. Give that a go. Nope, that's going to break the pliers. So it's, it is quite tight. That's not going to work. We don't want to break our ten pliers because Brandon will get really upset with me. Um, what we can do is we can use a little centre punch and we can put it in there and tap it round. Um, or, before we go that far, sometimes, sometimes you can use a circle of pliers just into two of them and give it a little turn. Nope, oh, that would break the circuit pliers. It is actually quite tight, so we might have to just resort to a, a little bit of a punch. A bit of tappage. God, you're going to be back on the hammer again, aren't you? <laughs> okay, well, I've got a small punch and that fits nicely in that groove. So, yep, magic hammer. Right, here goes. It goes nothing. Goodbye, fingers. Okay. It is moving. Right, and again. Go on. Cool. Right, one more. And again. You can actually hit it slightly less hard if you want. <laughs> Go on, keep going. Right, and again. Go on. Right. Okay, just keep keep tapping it. Until we get it all the way around. Right, whoop, 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 whoop. right and again. Reset. Okay. Definitely get the hand using that hammer now. Okay, and again. Yep. <laughs> Go on. Okay, keep going. Right, that might. There we go, look, right, we can just give it a twizzle out. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're removing the pinion. Pinion gear, or pinion shaft, right? So we've got a seal on there that would be replaced. And because that had a, where's that big lock nut gone? Was it that one? Yeah. Yeah. Because it had a lock nut, that tells us that the position of this is an adjustment. So inside here, I'm expecting to see maybe a taper roller bearing, and that adjustment would set the preload. So we'll have a little look. Oh no, I was wrong. It's just a normal bearing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, I'm not always right. Oh, jeez, look at that. Greasy. Greasy, and how worn is that? Look, see how it still has loads of movement on it? Yeah. So that bearing is completely shot. It shouldn't be like that. Okay. Yeah, it's greasy. So we'll have to give it a bit of a clean up, have a look. Where's my rag? Okay. So obviously, as part of the inspection process, we need to have a look at these teeth and see how badly worn they are. Because quite often, they wear through, when they wear, they wear through the case hardening. And you can see like marks and pits and stuff in it. I think we need to use the uh, brake cleaner, don't we, on that? Okay, right, so we'll come back to that. Okay, so all we've got left now is the tube of the steering rack and the actual rack itself. Now, because the pinion's out of the way, we should now be able to pull the
the rack shaft from the casing. So, let's get rid of some of that grease for you. There you go, do you want to pull that, pull that all the way out? Withdraw the shaft. There you go. Bloody good. And we're going to do some tests on that. Is it heavy? Not too heavy, is it? Yeah. That actually, we used to use one of these uh, back in England. Obviously, it wasn't covered in grease. <laughs> but it, uh, it was really good for a customer complaints department tool. Because it's just the right kind of weight, you know? Anyway, so you can see that, um, that linear gear now on there. It's actually in pretty good nick. There's no rust on there. Now, those, those heat marks, those, that discoloration of the metal, just down there, look. That's because in manufacture, they have to make those teeth really hard so they don't wear down. So they use heat, heat treatment. And that's the colour. When you see a metal change colour like that, you see all the rainbow colours in there. That tells you that it's got hot. Now, in this case, it's a deliberate got hot. But sometimes when you take things apart, like engines and things, you see marks like that on things that shouldn't have got that hot. Yeah. So it's an indication that metal has been has got super hot at some point. Right, so we've got the rack out, and we're going to do some testing on that as well. And we've now got... Oh, Jesus. Right, got the casing. Now, normally... Normally, and this one hasn't got it by the looks of it, normally there's a, a bush at each end. I'm looking inside there, buying the grease. There's no bush at that end. But there is one down there, like, see that little sort of plasticky piece? Yeah. So that, that bush there again could be worn and if you're getting movement on the rack when they're doing the warrant of fitness they have to grab hold of one of these and they have to sort of move from side to side and if they can feel movement on the rack again that's a fail so it looks like on this particular steering rack because it's a non-power steering they haven't bothered to put a bush in there they're just relying on the on the yoke and the pressure the force that the yoke applies which is via that one, isn't it? That's the small one. So that yoke is pushing against the rack, and that's what's stopping the movement on this end of the rack. But on here, we've actually got a bush because there's no yoke. But I wouldn't like to rely on just a spring to do that, to be honest. I'd rather see a bush at this end as well. But hey, I'm just an engineer. Right. Okay. I wonder how easy it is to get that, bu that, uh, that bush out. It's probably... You see it's got some little like ramps on it there, look. Yeah. Probably, if we try and take it out, we're going to destroy it. Because when you put the new one in, it'll just go clip. Yeah. So we'll leave that in there. Okay, right. So, we need to do a measurement on the rack. Now, one of the problems with these is because it's a long piece of metal, and it's supposed to be dead straight, if the car was in an accident, and say one of the front wheels hit a curb or hit another car, it could, it could bend that. And if it had a very slight bend on it, as it moves from side to side, it's going to jam in that tube. Yeah? <coughs> so, it's a really easy way of testing how bent or not bent this rack is. And we've got some, some V-blocks over there, and we're going to set up a DTI gauge, and we're actually going to take a reading. Okay. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What we'll do, first of all, off camera, is we'll get everything cleaned up, because otherwise we get grease yeah. everywhere, don't we? Right. Right, Sam, I've decided you can clean these up. Yeah. I'm beyond cleaning things these days. Far too important. Not really. Right, so you need a rag. I'll get you a fresh rag because that one's pretty much full of grease anyway. I chose a rag to match your shirt. <laughs> cool. I'll make it a bit smaller, I think. It's a bit on the big side, isn't it? Free rag. And you're going to need what we call brake cleaner. So you're probably best off putting those back on again, just in case, because it goes in your eyes and it really, really, really stings. Yeah. Alright, so you just spray this stuff on anywhere you want and then clean it off with the rag. Cool. While you're doing that, I'm going to tidy up. Okay. Right,
We can pop that bearing off if you want while we're on. Might be easier to get in there. So to do the bearing, I'm going to be really dangerous not wearing any eye protection. You can stick it on there. It's not quite touching the teeth. And then if you hit that with a hammer, the pinion will come out the bottom. See your sort of welling charge of hammers at the moment. Boom. Go on. Does that make sense? Fall yeah. through? Uh, not really fall through. No. Hang on. Way. Whoa. See that look? Uh. So the bearing's dying. Okay. So we <coughs> need to just tweak that up a little bit so it's more on the inner race than the outer race. Because the outer race is bad. Alright, go on again. Go on. Go on. Yeah, go in. Uh, right, try again. Oh, did it. Nearly. Scary. Yeah, you didn't hurt me, it's alright. It's all good. All right, so you can clean those teeth a bit easier now, okay? Yeah. Off. Right. If you look on the teeth there, see, see the shiny bit? Mm -hmm. That's the bit that's been in contact with the linear teeth on the rack shaft. So that's the bit that's going to wear. But either end, see, it's all dull. Up there, look and it's dull here. So if you look at the dull bits and look at this flat part of the tooth here, see how wide it is there? Mm -hmm. And as we follow it around, it's going to get a little bit thinner. Now if that, if that flat bit disappears altogether and it's more of a point, you know that the gear is really badly worn. Okay, sorry, battery went flat. Right, so we're back. So where were we, Sam? Run me through what I was saying. We were checking the tooth, the, the wear on the teeth, weren't we? If it, if it gets thin, then it's fucked. <laughs> yeah, well, we use that off camera, definitely. Yeah, you're quite right. A very technical term, that. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, you've got a non-wear area here, and that's quite wide on the tooth, the, the, pe the, the peak of the tooth. Mm -hmm. And as you follow it down to the, into the wearing area, you, that will, obviously, over time, get thinner and thinner. If you also look right down at the base of the tooth as well, you'll see a ridge starting to develop uh -huh. down there as well. So that's an indication that it's, it's obviously it will wear, but you know how badly worn is it? And you've got to make the call, can we reuse it? Because if you can't reuse it, if that's really badly worn out, then you can't rebuild the rack because you can't just go and buy a pinion. You've got to buy the whole thing. Now, we, um, we took that bearing off as well, just to, just to aid cleaning this just to highlight just how warm that is and if we give it a bit of a clean out again because it's got some dust in it. Brake cleaner is great for this and you might just be able to see just how much movement there is on that bearing there. Look, it really is terrible. Really, really bad. It shouldn't be like that at all. It shouldn't have that kind of movement on it. In actual fact, it's not even doing what it's supposed to do that. The cage isn't really spinning as well as it should do. And the cage actually is nylon. I can pop it out. You might see blood. No. That's not going to come out of there. Right, not to worry. Okay, right, so we've done that. We've looked at the pinion, and the pinion is sort of okay. It's, it's what you expect on such an old car. But it is still serviceable. It's not beyond. There's no... It hasn't broken through the hardening of the, uh, of the actual teeth. So that's all good. So you could, you could get away with reusing that, but you put a new bearing on it. Okay, so we just need to finish off cleaning up the rack, and then we'll get that set up in the V-blocks, and we'll take a, um, a run-out check on the rack. Wow, a little brush. Yeah, a little nice. like toothbrush kind of thing would probably mm -hmm. be perfect. I think maybe that's asking too much, but I might have a brush. Give you a hand. Try not to spray and break later. You can use a little screwdriver if you want just to put on your rag. There you go, look like that, and you can run it down uh, with your screwdriver. That sometimes gets right down the bottom. So you put that on, I mean. Yeah. Just helps get all the grease out. Laborious. We could.
could just use a wire brush, plenty of brake cleaner. Look at that. Super old. Disgusting. Oh, yeah. Brake clean is quite good at dissolving gloves as well. Oh really? Yeah, it's not the greatest stuff. Yeah, see if I can get a, see if I can get that in there. Look, see if that's gonna just help disturb it a bit. Yeah, I'll give it another go. <clears throat> Looks pretty clean now. Hey, we're doing a good job, professionals. It shit stinks. <laughs> yeah, get used to it. Right, I use my other rag for this bit. Done. No more grease. Good job. Okay, time for some V blocks, I reckon. Okay, so after a few minutes, the rack, Sam's got the rack nice and clean, no grease on there, so we can now drop it into some V blocks and do a run out test on it. And V blocks look a bit like this, and they need to be good and strong, and you need to make sure that they're basically clamp down because you don't want the V-blocks rocking around on the bench because that's going to massively upset your readings. And you'll see plenty of the other videos that I've made uh, on the RAV4 engine checks. We did some uh, run out checks on the um, camshafts and the crankshaft and other bits and pieces. So they're all on there. Okay, right Sam, a couple of G-clamps. Grab one of those. You got it. Pretty simple stuff. Remember if Andy can do it, you can do it. I did. But I'm, I'm cameraman as well. I'm a bit it's, it's not easy. Brilliant. Okay, so one rack. That should drop onto there. And you want the V-box really about as far apart as you can. That's going to maximise the, the reading we get. This one could do me fit through that way. I'm useless. Right, you grab that. Keep that end on there, look. Brilliant, that's a lot better. Okay. Right, so we're going to need. We're getting really technical today. In here is a DTI gauge. All right, it's a dial test indicator, and it's got a little arm on it. You can get most of them have a little plunger, but for some reason, I ended up more with an arm on it. And it measures basically how the movement of that arm you can see on the on the gauge. Yeah. And the scale on here, each little tiny line is 0 0.01 of a millimeter. So one full circle, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, would be point uh, almost point eight. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's pretty good. It's it's not the best one in the world to be honest. I've got a new one coming. But it'll do for this trick. And we're gonna set it up. So that it basically it rests on the rack, and as we turn the rack, it's going to tell us how much it moves up and down. Okay. <laughs> so we need to do it accurately. We can't just hold it because it's not going to work. So that goes on there like that. And then this is a magnetic base. You can turn it on. And okay. Doesn't move. That's cool. Yeah. So it's posh stuff. Really, I don't understand why I've got it. Anyway, that's why. Okay. And some more bits. Yeah, it should go on there. Hopefully. Oh, that one goes on there. Right. And then it always takes a while to set these things up because you, you've got to, you know, work out how to do it. I, I want that gauge at the top so I can film it. So yeah. but, 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 that'll work. I'll put that through there, look like that. Oh, wrong size. Brilliant. I'll move that down a bit. Oh, it's all coming together now. And it wants to be somewhere, ideally, right in the middle of the rack. Yeah. <coughs> Here's the plan. And you've got to play around with it because you've got to get it in the right place. So we'll turn on the magnet, because that's not going to go anywhere now. 
we've got to make sure we've got movement up and down and we haven't you see it's it's not moving at all it's actually a little the needles probably a little bit yeah it's above the rack so we need to just twiddle it down a bit and we can do that we can really posh we can do that by turning this so the quick wants to say that there and then we've got movement both ways mm -hmm. and all we do then is twizzle it around so it's zero on the needle and now yep we are set up to take a reading yeah, just twizzle it around very slowly and watch the needle. And the needle might go that way or it might go this way. And it's the total distance from the sort of two limits that you've got to okay. take a reading of. All right, boss, do you want to turn that for us? And try and make sure it doesn't drop onto the teeth because it will affect the reading. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So we've got really to. <laughs> yeah, it is actually really bad. So we've got, point, we've got one little mark this side of the zero, yeah. and we've got right down to... Almost the 10, not quite the yeah. same. Yeah. So when you get near the 10 again on the next one, just slow right down so we can get a reading of it. Okay, Sam, if you want to twizzle that around nice and slow, we'll see what we get. Okay, so that's point 0.8, or 8 little notches, should I say. Zero... Oh, so it didn't go beyond zero this time because we did move the gauge around a bit for the camera. So we've got the same reading, yeah. which is 0 0.08 of a millimetre of run out. Cool. Good job. So the question is, is that within spec or outside spec? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know either, actually. Oh, okay. It's a little manual. But it's not, it's not great. Usually, usually they allow about 0.1. So if the if this if the spec for this was point one, it would still be a pass. Just go on and get yourself ready. You good? I'm ready. You good to go? Hair's good. Cap's good. Yeah. Cool. So steering rack. We pulled it up. Sam pulled it apart. Uh, remember, non-power steering. Very different on the power steering steering racks, and we'll cover that on another video. But uh, we pulled the rack apart, we found, what did we find? We found a dodgy, is it that one? Nope, not that one, that one's good. We found quite a worn rack end, and you can see it's pretty manky in there with the grease, and it wasn't, was it this one? It couldn't hold its weight? I think it was that one, wasn't it, earlier on? Basically, if you hold that end and give it a wiggle, it should maintain position, and at the moment it's behaving itself. It was that one. No, that one's really tight. So this one's definitely a pass, really tight on the ball. Whereas that one had, it was quite loose in certain positions where it had worn over time. You tend to lose it when it's not in the rack. So that needs to be replaced, or is borderline replacement. The UJ that we found, just check that, Sam. Any good? Feels pretty smooth in both directions. No, yes. <laughs> Oh, okay, there you go, it. that's it. So you just do it both ways, feels quite smooth. Yeah. Excellent. So that's the UJ was a pass, that's good, but you must check those. Uh, we looked at the pinion, and the wear on the pinion teeth was good. You can actually drop these into a DTI, into, a, you know, into the V-blocks as well, and try and take a bit of a reading, see if it's bent. But hey, you know, you're probably not going to get much of a reading out of that, in all honesty. Um, but the teeth look pretty good, there's no wear the case hardening so yes I would reuse that definitely the bearing however shot needs a new bearing part number one five oh, Jesus I say one five yeah one five BSW 10 if you ever have a Nissan Sentra was it 1988 or something and need a new bearing that's the part number totally useless right what else did we find I think everything else was good the rack, the rack shaft itself, we got a, a, a runout reading of 0 0.08 millimeters, and it all depends on the spec. If we were said this, if the spec was 0 0.1 of a millimeter, then it would be just within spec. But you'd have to look at the manual for that. It's different for every car. Okay, well that brings us to the end of yet again another video. It's good fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you learnt some more? 
Yeah. We use it. We use <laughs> Always it. learning because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> when you start so low, yeah. everything's a learning curve. <laughs> That's what I tell my students. When you know nothing, you learn everything every day. Oh, a little piece, anyway. So, I hope you found the video helpful. We've used a DTI gauge. We've used um, what we, a monkey wrench, wasn't it, as well? Yeah. We've used a monkey wrench and all sorts on there. Um, again, not often are you going to pull one of these things apart. But if you have a problem with your steering, then, you know, at least you can pull it apart, diagnose the fault, and then you know, hey, I need a new steering rack. Because you can't go out and buy just a pinion gear. It's not going to work. Nobody will sell you one. Um, you're not going to be able to go out and buy, sorry DTI, uh, just the rack. If this was bent and everything else was good, you can't just go out and buy one of these. Nobody will sell you one. You've got to go and buy a complete rack. But at least you know there was a fault with the rack and you're not just throwing parts at your car trying to fix it, you know, in, in the hope of fixing it by throwing the parts on it. You're actually going to diagnose it and work out what the problem was. So when you know when you, you fit a new rack to it, you know the problem's going to be fixed. And that way, you don't spend too much money on things that you don't need, basically. Okay, well, if you found the video interesting, and Sam, you from this side, this side, you should subscribe to the and channel. Like. Up there somewhere. Uh, click on subscribe, you will see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. If you're on a smartphone, you can click the bell. It's a one-click operation, and again, YouTube will send you a, uh, an email as and when I upload any new videos. Uh, I can't promise Sam will be in all of them, but uh, she's certainly turning out to be in quite a few. Yeah. Good fun. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals, but I would prefer first point of contact on YouTube in the comments section, because, hey, let's face it, that's where the videos are. Okay, crew, well, thanks for watching. It's goodbye from me and... Bye from Sam. <laughs> Cheers, crew. Over and out.